Ghana Community Garden, which is a very special space to me. Uh, this is the first garden that I did uh, back in 2012. This uh, space used to just be grass, and I'd already been working with farmers, so I had started feeling like it was time for me to start growing. I was like, yo, I should start getting into the production side of the thing, you know? I uh, was looking for an apartment and found one about four blocks from here. And when I found that spot, I was like, yo, it must be meant for me to take on this space. We started a garden with a grant from uh, an organization called Feast RVA. They gave us $700 to, to get it going. Uh, we took that $700, bought soil, bought wood, um, and built the first 12 raised beds, which are in the core of the garden still. After that, you know, we kept applying for grants. We got fiscal sponsorship through the Enrichment Foundation. And we kept applying, you know, we just kept hitting the lick. It was like magic. The momentum was like catalytic. I mean, $500 here, $1,000 there, $3,000 there. It's been more like as, as of late, the last couple of years since I've been at Lewis Ginner, you know, this is one of those spaces that is in the middle of a residential neighborhood. So goals have been with the Ginner Urban Garden Program to really help build the sustainability. And one of those things was, you know, A, pollinators, you know, how to make it so that when people plant their fruit and vegetables that the uh, pollinators, butterflies, bees, and stuff like that are living here and have a good home, are attracted to the space, you know what I mean? To make it more uh, productive on that end. And then um, the fruit trees, we put in, man, I think maybe it's about 15, 16 fruit trees that we put in on, on the space. Because a lot of times people talk about access to fresh fruit and vegetables, but they really don't talk about the fruit. So say, hey man, these fruit trees would be a good lick. And that's been an experiment. They've been productive. It's, it's, it's coming along. I'm really hype about it. Not only because it's the first garden that I started, but also because it's one of the more successful spaces that I've been involved in, in the sense of like, Nobody's getting paid to come out and work here, but people are taking over their beds, you know, taking care of them. Uh, people are growing things. There's a partnership with local restaurant that grows, that buys produce. So I was introduced to Duran a little over a year ago um, through a mutual friend and uh, was interested in his ideas about connecting restaurants in Richmond with the community gardens. McDonough is literally less than a block away from our restaurant, so it was a really great matchup. We wanted to get involved. We started doing simple things like composting and then taking it down um, to the garden and, and participating with the compost there. This is the early stage, like this stuff here. This first bin is bulk of the vegetable scraps. Then we would flip it and take that stuff and dump it in this one. The second time we dump it, it would be the last time we dump it, and then it'd be ready for use. Creating that zero waste loop, the folks that run the restaurants or what have you, usually pay for somebody to come take their trash. So oh, you don't have to pay, just come dump your stuff inside of the compost and we'll make you do something special for the garden. We haven't bought any additional compost for the site. We just use the compost that's been growing here. And um, that's been a great thing for people to fertilize their gardens with. Buying produce from the community garden, it was just really simple. But I think for us it's been really positive in the sense of um, connecting to the greater community around us and I don't know, yeah, just participating on some, some like really grassroots level. Our relationship with our neighbors doesn't have to be they come and purchase things from us. That doesn't have to be the only relationship we have with them. It doesn't have to be all to our benefit. Like our relationship with our neighbors could just be that sometimes we lend a helping hand because we're neighbors. And um, as, as a business we're still neighbors. We build raised beds on uh, city land because city land uh, more often than not has toxins in it. And when I say toxins, I mean heavy metals, things like arsenic, things like lead, asbestos, cadmium. Like all of these things are extremely harmful and detrimental to human consumption. This environmental justice conversation, like most urban soils have heavy metals. And if we are paying attention to the environmental justice implications of urban greening, then raised beds in an urban environment is the way to go. 
before we got it, the city did a test on the soil and it showed that it had high particles of lead inside of it. So instead of growing directly in the ground, we, we laid a barrier between the original ground and the soil that is being grown inside. It began as a social experiment. It still is a social experiment, really to see what does it take to uh, build a space that can produce food, but that's also aesthetically appealing. Just create a space where people can facilitate their passions and you know they can connect, uh, especially to nature. And then, like recently, we just finished this shaded patio area with the pergola, which I'm really hype about because before there wasn't really a space to sit that was shaded. It's just been fun watching it be what it is to some folks, you know what I mean? To, to especially the people testing and learning how to garden. And like I said, this used to just be grass. So now it's, you know, something totally different. And, you know, it's pulling people together in a different type of way. It's been, it's been dope.